Hey guys and girls, welcome to this week's episode of the No BS with Birchie podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Birch, and this is the show unraveling the truth to the facade of the 21st century. We're now exiting the matrix and waking up to motherfucking reality. Never gets old. Never, Never gets, gets old. old. Never gets old. Um, today, I'm joined with Andrea here from Blink Property. Thanks for coming on. Hi. Today. Thanks, Nathan. And today, today, we're going to be talking about how to get the maximum rental in any property market. And uh, I think if we go back and look at all the markets across the country, every time you look at the news, it's saying people living in their cars and sleeping in their cars and rental shortages and all that. Um, a lot of people just think, okay, the market's going up. And like when we look at our rents, um, yeah, every, there's, there's all different markets nationally. It's not just yes. there's one big, big market. And if I speak to Sharon over in Western Australia, um, the Perth market there, there's like 50 people, 80 people they've in an open home and rents go for more. They've actually stopped rental auctions over there. That's how bad it got to. Um, you know, we're here in Sydney. Um, the market's different. Uh, if we look at Queensland, you know, market's different. If we look at Melbourne, there's a whole different story over there, right? So, um, yeah, whilst things have been, you know, very good over the recent few years, um, I want to take a deep dive. And a lot of people aren't talking about, you know, the fact of what happens in a different market, right? If people condition that every year the rent goes up 50%, it's not sustainable to be thinking that. And um, we're on the eve of some changes out there in the market. I'm going to talk about it maybe in some other podcasts that so keep watching in. But I'm going to be talking about what I see happening uh, over the next few months, potential interest rate cuts, stuff like that. And um, if we see that, we see more tenants leaving and buying a house and there could be you know less rent, less renters out there because everyone's buying a property. Yeah. Um, you know, you need to be prepared for that and how can sure. you, you know, position yourself and make sure you get that max of rent. So on that note, Andrea, um, just for those that are watching, you know, for the first time seeing you on the podcast, uh, maybe if you can share a little bit about yourself, um, your background and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm originally from Melbourne. So I've been in Sydney almost three years um, with Blink about two and a half years now. There we yeah, go. Yeah, assistant property manager and yeah, really enjoying it. Always worked in property mainly um, in my later career and yeah, I absolutely love it. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So you're in Melbourne and like your, your whole life, yeah? Like most of your life? Most yeah. of my life, yeah. 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 And yeah. you're doing, you're working in real estate offices, like started out in open homes, leasing. And, Correct, yeah. yeah. I did about six months in property management over there, but did about five years doing um, the leasing side of things. So yeah, yeah okay. I did it for quite some time. Cool. So no yeah. better to talk to someone who's been on the boots on the ground. Yeah, on the ground know? for a long time. Yeah. You've seen all different markets, like uh, Melbourne, you saw a couple of different markets there, good market, bad markets. We did. Um, Sydney, I think when you came on like two and a half years ago, it was probably just coming out of the slump. The entail of the slump. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And that's sort of what we need to look at. It's like we're in, a, sure. we're in a boom. There's no denying that. Not every market is. So some, some Not every market, market is. The metro yeah. markets differ to your regional markets, um, differ yeah. to your markets down by the beach, that coastal, sort of thing, yeah. so your coastal yeah. markets, yeah. And then you've got your eastern suburbs and your hills districts. And yes. Yeah. So it's um, exciting. So looking forward to talking more about that. I guess like, you've worked at like some of those big corporate brand name sort of real estate mm -hmm. offices. Um, what would you think the difference between, you know, what you observe – what we do for our investors compared to like a, a normal real estate agent would do? What? I think, look, we do the basics that everyone else does. Obviously, we collect mm -hmm. rent and um, put your tenants in. We do your leasing, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But I think where we differ um, is probably able to increase the investors' numbers, the amount of properties um, that Nathan's investors have compared to what I saw previously. Um, mm -hmm. I was astounded when I came to work for the business. Um, I've never seen anyone in double digits. Yeah, in okay. in the big ones, I think the most I saw was three or four, yeah, wow. and they were you know like VIPs. Yeah, wow. Um, in our in our business, but the most was one or two. Three or four years. Three to four just years. Getting <laughs> just, exactly <laughs> just getting started. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I think that's yeah that yeah. that the difference between us and yeah and the others. And look at like the rents, like when we when we buy these properties for our investors. So some people watch our podcast, they even know what business we do. Like some of them are talking about the government, uh, right? <laughs> some of them talk about property, some of them talk about economy. Um, but like as as a as a business, like 
from my side, I do the buying and the acquisition of the assets of my investors' portfolios. You're looking after the management and the, the day-to-day of it. Um, when we pick up properties, I'd say, or well, maybe I'll ask you this question, like what percentage roughly, like in, in Sydney, um, I look at all of them, so I know all the numbers, so I'll say what I see is the numbers nationally. <laughs> what percentage do you think roughly that you would see when the person buys the property would be under-rented? Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm going to say 60 to 70% at least would be under-rented yeah. from what we get from other agents, from what we receive, yeah. Yeah. For sure. That's like, I did a deal the other day and it was criminal, right? This person was signed on a lease with an agent for two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, it should be 400 bucks per duplex mm-hmm. um, minimum. And uh, it was a new fresh lease from this year and it was $155 each side, right? It was like 250 bucks a week. It was like 500 bucks a week yeah, across crazy. both of them. It's 26 grand a year. Um, yeah, I had in the same location something else had happened mm-hmm. about a year ago, right? Mm-hmm. And it's and it was a duplex as well. And um, it's just criminal when you look at it. And it's like lazy agents. Uh, yeah, For sure. I, yeah. I'd, I'd say it'll be about 80% out there. You'd say 80%. Yeah. There is yeah. a percentage that come to us unrented. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. And it's... It's cool, like uh, sometimes having a vacant property is good because you can just put fresh tenant, fresh straight rent, in. straight yeah, in. Absolutely, um, absolutely. And then we get a very small percentage that come to us um, and they're at a decent rate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's interesting because when I look at them, like I'm constantly each month, I go to the licensees of each, each state and I get them to send me all the property rental increases. Mm-hmm. And then I personally go, I'm say out of like, all the teams, all the reviews of rents or the rent reviews, mm-hmm. um, I'd say there'd be majority on par, like maybe 75% of the time there would be. Mm-hmm. And I'd say about 25% of the time, like, no, nah, we can still push that another 20 bucks, another 40 bucks, mm-hmm. another 50 bucks. And um, so just for quality assurance of the portfolios, like every dollar we can push is just, you know, more cash flow Absolutely. for the investors. Yep. And I don't think there's many real estate offices out there that would be asking their um, their tenant, their landlords, like, hey, when tell me what are your goals? Mm. How many I've properties? Not heard that before. No, not before where I came here. Yeah, no one asked like, how many pro? When was the last time your property manager asked you? Okay, so what's your goal? Ten properties, fifteen properties. Um, how many are you going to buy this year? Like people say, you shouldn't talk about money uh, or religion or um, sex or politics at the dinner table, right? But they're just people that, you know, if you're not talking about money, it's because you don't have money. If you're not talking mm. about, you know, this, you're not, you know, there's certain words that you probably shouldn't have How said. How do you the build your strategy if you don't know what your goal you know, is? You, you just shut it. You go, you shouldn't talk about it, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, we have those conversations, which makes us mm-hmm. different, I guess. So, yeah. We do. And um, I, I guess... You know, over, if we get to the topic of the day of like, how can we maximise those rents across mm-hmm. all, all the markets? Like we're seeing and like some of the rental increases, like I'll talk on behalf of like Perth and uh, and, and Queensland, mm-hmm. um, like open homes, like a tenant moves out, put a new tenant in, 200 bucks a week, mm-hmm. rent leases up, 200 bucks. The tenants are prepared. They know like, hey, we're fucked. We're going to cop like a, a, a nice hike here, right? The tenants know their markets as yeah. well. Yeah. They're very well versed. They're like, yeah. they're losing sleep over it. They're <laughs> up to the end of the lease, right? <laughs> These guys are coming for us. Um, yeah. What, um, like we're seeing like 200 bucks, 150 bucks, mm-hmm. 100 bucks increases. Mm-hmm. But I've also seen it on the flip side when people have had to reduce rent. Right? And it wasn't long ago, like we're buying in migrant dense populations that are across like Sydney, for example, mm-hmm. and the Sydney market had to come back. Like stuff that was renting for 350 was renting out for 250 mm-hmm. and 300. Those things now are renting for 500. But if the market was to ever do a turn, what would be the things that we'd need to look out for? Yeah. What would be some of the things that we could do to prepare ourselves and get ourselves well? I'll leave it over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So I think, well, the first thing comes from you, I guess, which is looking in correct locations. So that's the buyer's agency takes care of that before it ever comes to us. Um, But I think then while pricing a property um, Mm. and also presentation and making sure it's in good working order. So making sure that your maintenance is up to date and um, that sort of thing. People will notice straight away um, an unmaintained property. They'll come in and um, 
carpets will be stained or you'll see dripping taps and things like that. And mm. if that's what you're showing, yeah. then what are you hiding? Yeah. Um, so people walk in straight away and, yeah, um, and ask the questions. I guess in a, like, if if you're a tenant, if you're a tenant, right, and you if you're in a market, like in a market like today, yeah, sure, just rent out whatever. It's like shit. I'll take that. I'll put a rug over the floor. I'll change the carpet myself, right? Like just <laughs> we leave, get that. right? Yeah. But if we're in a market when there's more stock on the market, yeah. the good tenants will go to the one that's better condition because they've got more choice. Mm-hmm. Um, in a bad market, like, and you've got a property that doesn't present well, you've got to be thinking who's the tenant. They're the ones that can't go and rent those properties right yeah um so you want to be attracting yeah Yeah. cool yeah 100 percent. yeah so sorry i was going to say like what would you deem as like the main things that investors could like would be the standout things for tenants i think tenants are a lot more savvy these days so (laughs) having things like air conditioning um, making sure that your property has a parking space if it is not near public transport are really important. Um, giving them things like dryers in their apartments. Uh, in apartment buildings, you don't have the luxury of having, you know, your yeah. hills hoist. Yeah. Um, so just your little things like that. I wouldn't yeah. go over the top and um, overcapitalise with things like um, heated towel rails or expensive kitchen appliances or things, All things like that. All things to break. Yeah, exactly. But just having really good, well-working basics and have it well presented. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess different markets as well. Like some markets are good for people who want carpet in the places. Some markets will want tiles or floorboards. Many are actually going away from carpets. Yeah. With all the allergies and things like that. Yeah. Um, a lot are basically saying tiles. We're yeah. happy to throw down a rug. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tiles or floorboards are the go these days. And it's also great if you, you know, it's pet friendly. Yeah. More people have got pets in apartments these days. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to continuously be changing the carpet or, or things like that. So yeah, tiles are a great option. Yeah. Every time a property comes vacant, I'm like, I want to keep my tilers busy. I'm like, Let's, should we just retile this one? And, and they look great. They yeah. look great. And they're durable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll ask, make sure you have like a good box of those tiles left over because mm. someone dropped something on them, they chipped and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. That property I was talking about before the podcast, let's go and get, the, if, if it's not rented this week, we'll send the tiler out there and redo the, the flooring in it. So cool. And um, I, I guess, you know, is it that they want new kitchens, new bathrooms? Like what, what sort of things would be? Best, like, not so much it just yeah. needs to be functional um i wouldn't keep your old tapware in there if you've got old tapware change it flip mixes mm. and that sort of thing make sure um plenty of storage is another one so make sure your bathrooms and your kitchens have vanities um yeah it doesn't have to be flash it doesn't have to be a brand new kitchen um yeah. make sure your cabinetry is in good working order you've got all your handles on everything yeah the insides aren't falling to bits you can you yeah. know you get some that have got great uh cabinet doors but you open them up and the shelves are slumping because they've had uh, moisture Water. damage and yeah. things like that so yeah i would say just make sure everything is in good working order and presentable and i, I guess on the flip side of that <clears throat> if you have if you have a tenant that moves in and there's like some damaging to the car- cupboard, um, then when the tenant moves out, if they've destroyed the cupboard, they can just try and say, oh, it's wear and tear. Whereas if you've mm-hmm. got a good working order, they've signed off on the condition report saying Absolutely. that's a good you know, good piece of working order. Yeah. And then they leave and the whole thing's, then you can claim on insurance bonds and stuff Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. And please make sure you've got insurances in place. <laughs> yeah. We find too many people that don't have insurances. So, yeah, put your landlord insurance yeah. in place. And yeah, when people you- come on board with this, like, like, firstly, if you don't have insurance, you're stupid for not having insurance. You must have it. And we sort of don't even want to take your business if you're not going to insure it because you're leaving yourself open for litigation and, mm. yeah, problems. So, yeah. Absolutely. Cool. And um, I, I guess, you know, looking at the maintenance, what sort of things, mm-hmm. like, as investors, we want to try and minimise the expenses and maximise mm-hmm. our return to sort of the, the big part about it. What sort of things would be minimal that we could do on a rental property and what things? To, for presentation purposes, yeah, to make yeah. something look good. Just try and make it look modern, I guess. If, you, if the basics are in place, um, little things like changing handles on stuff like that. Make sure your blinds... Um, 
I wouldn't use Venetian blinds, for example. I'd use verticals or roller blinds, um, mm. something that's easy to use. Um, just I would say just your basics, honestly. Yeah. For bigger items, bigger ticket items, if you are needing to change cabinetry, um, whether it be your bathroom or your kitchen, we can organise maintenance plans. So we can get quotes for you um, and, you know, it gives you time to put away some cash yeah. um, for the time when you do actually need it. So we can tell you what shape your property's in. Uh, yeah. via routine inspection um, and sort of what life your cabinetry has left in it or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, but put money away for yeah. the things that are unforeseen, you know, hot, hot water systems blowing up and the like. Yeah. I, um, I, w I went for a drive last year to uh, all the motels. I hadn't seen them. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went through them, I was like, shit, I've got about like a dozen pools here, mm -hmm. right? And I'm looking at deck chairs, I'm looking at the air cons, and I was like, we need to have asset registers, right? Everything in the room, mm -hmm. the desks, the tables, the chairs, yeah. they're all assets of yours. So you need to be thinking, okay, out of 20 properties or 10 properties or five properties that I've got, how many toilets do I have? How many vanities do I have? Mm -hmm. You know, running your portfolio more like a business than just, For sure. yeah. Because when you know the metrics of how many you've got, you might be able to find a sale where there's a sale on X amount of air cons or X amount of tiles right. or whatever. So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And also the suppliers that we use, we use on a regular basis. Yeah. So because we use them in bulk, we can get good prices for you as well. So yeah. Awesome. And I guess like when we're looking at renting a property, mm -hmm. how do we what do we what sort of things do we look at to determine the price, whether it's over under mm -hmm. or at market and how do we get the maximum from it? So we have a look at what's currently on the market on realestate.com. Um, yeah. We also have a look at a um, comparative analysis report um, yeah. so that basically tells us what's rented. We can filter it by area and we can filter it by timing. Yeah. So I usually, I, I used to look at six months worth of data. I now look at about three because the markets are changing so rapidly yeah. um, and I look at between two and five kilometres. I don't generally look at any more than that, um, especially in, in Metro. Yeah. But the analysis report will tell you the prices that the properties have actually rented for. Yeah. Um, so yeah. what's on the market can be very different to what they went for in, in the end. So, yeah. yeah. And I guess also um, looking at the amount of stock that's on the market as well. Mm -hmm. Like if there's only two properties on the market, then, mm -hmm. you know, there's a better chance we can push it a bit harder because there's lack of stock and competition there amongst is. that. Yeah. There is. And we still do get offers um, quite regularly above the market price or above the advertised price yeah. um, that we've got. And we've got to be really careful with that. There's a lot of rules and regulations regarding that. But yeah. the, the offers, we do get the offers. Yeah. Or advanced rent is the other one that we get, um, yeah. paying three to six months advanced rent. And the other thing I was going to ask you is um, a lot of people have seen this is like a national, every every state has their different laws and rules and regulations and that. A lot of people, I was speaking to someone the other day and he's like, I can't put my rent up because I just um, re-signed a lease for six months in New mm -hmm. South Wales and I have to wait 12 months to push my rent up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was like three months into it. I was like, next month you can put your rent up. And he's mm -hmm. like, no, no, no. Uh, it's 12 months, 12 months, 12 months. And... A lot of people have a misconception about how often you can put your rent mm -hmm. up and it, and you know all that. So in Queensland, for example, they've put out a law that you can only increase your rent once a year. So if mm -hmm. you put on a six month lease, you have to wait another six months until you can push that rent up. Mm -hmm. In Western Australia, they're starting to go down that road as well. Mm -hmm. In New South Wales, how often can you put the rent up? At the end of every lease term. So yeah. if your lease term is six months, we yeah. can do it again in six months. What about if it's three months? We can do that too. <laughs> You'll probably have your tenant moving out if it's every three months. Um, but yeah, certainly every six, every six is the most common in New South yeah. Wales at the moment. And um, I know multi owners yeah. ask yeah. us that if they uh, if they have business, uh, sorry, if they have um, properties in uh, multiple different states, they will ask the question. I get that yeah. exact same question. But yes, in New South Wales, you can still currently push them up at the but end of the lease. It has to be in the lease. So you need to have your property in a lease. Um, if it's not in a lease, get in a lease. If it's a three-month lease, mm -hmm. like I, I know personally because you've been like Nathan, like calm down sort of thing, right, or some of them. <laughs> I know for perfect, like we've had some that have been a three-month lease to try them out. We have. And then after like a month or two months, yeah. they get a letter, hey, we'll give you another six-month lease, but yeah. your rent's going up by 20 bucks. Uh, they probably don't respond too well. They're not that happy. They, they don't always. Yeah. Um, we get a lot of people But they don't move though, out. Well, they've been there for a month. Like, they've been there, exactly. <laughs> I'll just spend a grand to move in. I'm not going to spend a grand to move in. It's not worth it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not worth it. Um, 
No, a lot of people used to argue the point. Not so many do anymore. Yeah. Um, I think people are just used to it now. Rent's going up. It's been happening for quite a while now. It's been happening for a good couple of years now that rents have been increasing um, quite rapidly. And, yeah, people are just basically thinking that they'd rather pay uh, whatever the rent increase is, saves them the moving costs, um, all associated with that. So we do get a little bit of pushback, but not, not as much as what we did. And I think that, like, it actually made me think about something, right? Because, like, let's say, for instance, the market did get softer, mm -hmm. right? And let's say all the tenants only remember last time they took up the property when they went into the property, mm -hmm. right? They will have a fear of 50 people at the open home. I better not fucking lose my speed, seat on the, on, yeah. the, on the bus. And then they'll be fearing that. So, mm -hmm. like, they'll be, like, more susceptible to going, okay, well, we don't want to be back out there in that mm. trap of, you know, the cycle of yeah. trying to find a property. So A lot of people that have split have come to us. They've owned their own home. They're now going into the rental market and they're proactively calling us up and saying, do you have rentals in this in this area? Yeah. I just wanted to introduce myself. This is my name. I'm coming out of home ownership and I see on the media all the stuff, you know, 40, 50 people at rental inspections. Yeah. Um, people are aware. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Wow. Yeah. It's like... It's uh, gone to the days where the, oh, the tenant's always right. It's, you know, it's like, <laughs> here's my resume. This is why I'm a good tenant. This is why you should take me. Pick me, pick me. It's, uh, it's, it's good in, in some aspects. But I still do see some of the, the cracks, like even though, like because we're so far across like every market, whether it be Cape York, the top of Queensland, whether it be the top of Western Australia, whether it be Perth, whether it be Northern Territory, whether it be Adelaide, mm. whether it be Melbourne, like, there is little markets where it's like, hey, hang on a second, that looks like it's hit a point. Mm -hmm. And just like anything, if the market doubles, triples, it might just come down that little tiny mm -hmm. bit. And you know, there is some little signs of cracks, but I think that we'll start seeing a more softer market as we get closer. A, people are becoming more broke because of just everything's going up and they can't afford things. Absolutely. And B, um, as interest rates start to drop, I think we'll start seeing that there's... Um, yeah, interest rates start dropping. Those people that couldn't afford to buy a house become serviceable mm -hmm. and then they start going in. And, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So. A lot of our tenants actually, in some cases when we do the applications, um, we need to get them to send in bank statements, particularly if they're working multiple jobs to mm -hmm. um, kind of ascertain how frequent their income is and, and where they're deriving it from. Yeah. And, um, yeah, a lot of our tenants will in the very short term become, you know, maybe our owners in the yeah. future. Yeah, we've got a lot of tenants that... Yeah. So there's the other aspect. So I, I know recently I've been doing an education series mm -hmm. for our tenants to, um, you know, show them on how to become an owner of a property and you know i'd say 50 percent of uh, i just said a number of my view of it but out of our owners like mm -hmm. how many do you think would be an uh, an investor but also be a tenant at the same time oh easily easily 50 percent like what you yeah. said probably more yeah probably more yeah a lot of people rent vest yeah. yeah a lot of people do it yeah so if we can take our tenants to become owners and then become more invested mm -hmm. into their own how they are as a tenant because they, yeah. Absolutely. As for expectations of tenants and like making sure that the tenants are behaving themselves and, mm -hmm. you know, all that sort of stuff, what sort of expectations should there be on a tenant and what sort of expectations should there be on an owner of like, you know, things like we're in a very different world today, mm -hmm. right? And I remember years ago, people like, and it's still, I don't know, do you ever have anyone says, hey, the cooking smells too much in the house, right? Do you have that <laughs> yeah, sort of? we, we have had that yeah. a lot, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's why if you want to make sure that your properties are suitable mm -hmm. for that, yeah? Like if you've got carpet and you've got cooking that's going to you know, get in the It'll carpet. It'll stay gonna, in the carpet. Yeah. It'll stay in the drapes. So you're getting, you're taking 10% of the market mm -hmm. where you're missing out on 90% of the market, you're going to have your property more versatile for the next 20 years by having tiles on the floor. It's little true. things that you can do Absolutely. in there, yeah. And again, it opens it up to pet ownership. So 70% yeah. um, of people that um, put in, um, that look up in realestate.com, look up for pets. Um, so you're basically, Crazy. yeah. I never wanted pets in my properties. Like, no, you didn't. They'll rip You've up my carpet. <laughs> well, they're all just concrete and, you know. Yeah, they are. Wash the, wash the tiles Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Right. And yeah. they're durable and they look good. Yeah. Yeah, floorboard tiles, they look great. Yeah. Anything else that you could say to you know, investors that are watching us today about what they could do to you know, 
get that high rental income and to be yeah abso- absolutely um so in terms of higher rental income as i said cleanliness it doesn't have to be uh overly modern, um, as long as it's clean, it's serviceable, um, it's well priced. We can always look at pricing, um, you know, in your rental um, lease renewals and things like that. Um, But your pricing when you're leasing a property needs to be on par with the market. Whether it be at the higher end or not, that's fine. Um, But it needs to be on par to to go at a reasonable time, less days on market. Yeah. What's the average rental days on market? About fourteen at the moment for you. Yeah, look, I'm yeah. I'm going to say that's Metro Sydney. Yeah. Um, your regionals can sometimes go quicker or or take more time. Yeah, depending on the location. But Metro Sydney is about fourteen day turnover. Fourteen days. Yeah. Okay, cool. We do get the odd property that we're able to do off market. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so sometimes when you say off market, like it's rented the day the tenant moves Yeah, or literally uh, we have people that come to open for inspections and they miss out on one property, but we might have a similar thing coming up that we know it's coming up in a week. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, at, uh, the next street down, similar yeah. pricing, similar layout, something that they would be happy with. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they come and take a look at it as soon as we get keys and we don't even need to advertise as yeah. a suitable tenant. They just missed out on the last one. And then having sort of like pre-approved tenants is important in your pocket. Like, does mm-hmm. your property manager have tenants or they? what do they do with their data? Do they just go, oh, yeah, nah, gone, mate. See you later, right? Or do they go, okay, tell me what you're looking for. You've got a good tenant. You want to try and allocate them yeah. in to, to, to minimise the... Yeah. Absolutely. We do have data. We, we do get to keep it in our system for a little while. So yeah. um, we can call people back within a certain time frame. Yeah. Um, being the market that it is, though, you find yeah. that when you do call people back, they've usually got another property. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And if someone was to come in like say a new tenant comes in today and says how want to take up a two-year lease what would you say to them today look you can <laughs> and we do do it however yep. a two-year lease would have clauses in it that like would still include clause. yeah rental increases so you yeah. wouldn't be free of a rental increase because you've got a longer lease yeah yeah i see people doing that i've i've story for another day but I've had thoughts about, you know, just those leases, right? There's an opportunity in the market because there's a lot of dumb people out there like, oh, I'd love a five-year lease. It'll be like <laughs> securing me. You never know what's going to happen in the economy. I better lock the tenant in, right? And um, the break lease fee on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, there's a whole model around that. But it's, uh, yeah. But it's like, but the break lease fee, if they're, like I said before, in 155 bucks a week, over 400 bucks a week, there's like... Yeah. There's, you could just go and re-let it out to someone else for more money, right? It's it's yeah. it's, it's, it's it's funny. It's so true. cool. Is there any other notes that you want to share with um, anyone today? Yeah, I'm going to say actually just a little tip for landlords: please leave money aside for unforeseen uh, unforeseen things that go wrong, hot water yeah. systems, that sort of thing. It's yeah. not covered under your insurance, um, so just leave a little buffer. Yeah, is probably one of my greatest tips. Landlord tip. Cool. And this one here, just a little bit of a, a final sort of thing for the day. Um, people ask us, oh, you're based in Sydney, you must just look after Sydney. Mm-hmm. We've got all throughout New South Wales, doesn't matter you know, whether you're etching on the border of Victoria, etching on the border of Queensland, we, mm-hmm. we literally cover the whole of New South Wales. And then when you go to Queensland, <clears throat> from the Gold Coast, Tweed Heads, all the way up to Cape York, right? Like we've got people on the ground, uh, whether you go inland, north, wherever, We've got, I think in Queensland, we've got like 40 staff, 50 staff on the ground there in Queensland. Um, so, yeah, we look after all of Queensland. We're not in Northern Territory yet. Um, uh, Western Australia, we've been in there for quite some time. Adelaide, South Australia, we're not there. Melbourne, we're not there. But what's happening as of this Friday, which is tomorrow? Ooh, which is tomorrow. Uh, we are opening Blink Victoria as of tomorrow. So open for business. There you go. Yeah, very got, exciting. We've already got like people lining up, and there's like oh, we actually <laughs> have. We've got properties ready to go. And it's like we need to get our licensing, <laughs> our trust accounting, everything lined up. And it's just a when you're dealing with the government and all this sort of stuff, there's like a lot of red tape. And hey, yes. we need to be making sure that everything's eyes are dotted and t's across as much. We don't like the government out there. There's like you know a lot of red tape and compliance. We're dealing with money that's not ours and it's trust account and it's all audited and you need to have you know it's like a lot of a lot of agents are non-compliant out there right i've seen it over the years of non-compliant agents and they're just garbage 
But um, from day one, we need to make sure all our compliance is up to date. We've actually got lawyers that work in our office here in head office, which came from the prosecution area of, you know, dealing with, <laughs> with those things because we want to make sure our compliance is tip top. So we're all set up and ready to go in Victoria. If you have a property mm. in Melbourne or anywhere around, we've got about, we literally cover maybe like a, anywhere between New South Wales to Melbourne, like in that whole stretch, like yeah. three hour strip along each side, um, we can look after you. Not so much in the Adelaide side of Victoria yet. Um, but yeah, if you've got a property in Victoria, and that's a very interesting market because the agents down there are wild. It's like the wild, wild west. <laughs> They're all so commie, right? No offense to anyone from Melbourne, right? But it's a different <laughs> breed and a different world. And you want to make sure that your property manager is fighting for your best outcome as a, as a as a as a landlord. Um, there's two types of property managers that are out there. You've got a pro tenant and a pro landlord. Ninety percent of agents are pro tenant. They oh the tenant's a good guy or a good chick and leave them alone and this and that. The next thing, hey you Mr Owner, you should be upgrading the property. You should be doing this. Don't put the rent up on them. They're good, right? You don't want an agent like that. And I feel like nearly 100% of the agents in Melbourne are very pro, um, you know, pro-tenant. A lot not, of them are. Not pro-landlord. Agents get bullied by tenants yeah. quite frequently. If you don't do this, I could just imagine someone with purple hair, blue hair, fucking shave their fringe off. This is my right. So I saw one on the news.com beforehand about oh, really? some tenancy, yeah, before the podcast. So, uh, from, oh, you know, tenants' rights is, like, they get bullied by that. They do. And, um, yeah, that's not, that's not a good Yeah position so at blink property we don't get bullied we get results we get the, the best rents we can we're fair we also see absolutely that tenants are a part of the ecosystem i wouldn't be spending my time educating the tenants with education information i do offline in webinar modules and master classes for tenants to educate them to be mm -hmm. you know better and all that sort of stuff but um you know, we understand that they're a part of the ecosystem. We've got to show them respect, but we need to stand up for the owners to make sure that they're getting their rights taken care of. And ultimately, if you've got um, one property and you're losing 50 bucks a week, like we talked about beforehand, mm. if your property is under rented by 50 bucks, 90, 90%, I reckon, 80% of properties that we're getting Easily. are under rented. If it's under rented by 50 bucks, that's two and a that's, um, two and a half grand a year that you're missing out on. If you are an investor and you want to be a serious investor and you've got 10 properties in your portfolio and they're under rented 50 bucks each because your property managers are all shit, then that's 50 bucks times 10, that's 500 bucks a week. 500 bucks a week, 52 weeks, 26 grand a year. You're losing 26 grand a year. That could be a day off next work. Next deposit. There's next deposit. There's the servicing you're missing out on because the bank says no, right? Your property manager is fucking up your financial future, mm. screwing up your life because they're not aligned with your goals. So we need to make sure they're aligned with your goals. So yeah. on that note, if you do uh, you know, want to chat to us at Blink and chat to Andrea, chat to the team, wherever, we've got like, I don't know, it's like tens of dozens. It's not even a thing. Tens <laughs> of dozens, right? Tens of dozens of staff. We're not at a hundred in Blink yet. Um, but we've got we're close we're closer to the, the hundred than what we are to the fifty level of staff throughout Blink. Mm. Um, you know, whatever neighbourhood you're in, if you need help with getting the best outcome on your property, uh, reach out to us. I don't have the Blink number on me, but just call us uh, <laughs> one three hundred six two nine six ten. So one three hundred six two nine six ten. That's New South Wales. That's though, New that. South Wales and currently Victoria as well. Yeah, cool. So if you want help reach out to the Blink team. What's the main, is there like a main info of Blink property or something? Yeah, like? there's our, uh, give us um, an email actually, nsw at blinkproperty.com.au or for Victoria, vic at blinkproperty.com.au. And if it's Queensland, it'll be QLD. QLD. And yeah. if it's and Western, it's Western Trust, at WA, <laughs> blinkproperty.com.au. But reach out to one of them and yeah, everyone's. There's like we can family, pass you sure, on yeah. if you've come through the wrong space, but yeah, absolutely. Most, most investors, traditionally, everyone's like, "Oh, I've got our two properties here, you know, in the same neighbourhood, right?" But a lot of our investors will have a property in Perth and two in Queensland and three in Victoria, and you know, have a, a spread out portfolio. So, reach out to us if you need help. We're here to help and maximise your cash flow for you. So. Absolutely. Thanks, Andrew. Thank for you. All that you. Do and all our 
investors are very happy with you know with you so it's a good time when they get to see you and uh, know that people behind the scenes so thanks a lot for watching and tuning in this week uh if you like what we put out there leave us a comment smash up the likes um and make sure to subscribe you can find us every thursday on google play apple play spotify and youtube we'll catch up soon have a great week bye for now like below sam man we're stuck in the matrix this my advice don't care if you take it the dollar back to die soon to be hyper inflated